ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls! Don't. In the fucking warehouse district, people are going to think I'm just, I'm raping you. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to episode... I don't know what episode it is. Do you know what episode it is? Why would I know what episode it is? It's it is. your podcast. I think it's like 120 or 119. Should we... It could be the final episode. Someone's just called the cops for sure. No. And like, oh, someone's raping one of the local prostitutes in the warehouse <laughs> district. <laughs> hey guys, uh, uh, I'm with my beautiful girlfriend Jasmine this week, uh, recording the podcast because... Uh, well, we just wanted to talk about what we've been doing this past week and we've just been absolutely swamped facilitating the release of my comedy special, yes. which you will find out the release date of uh, very soon. Not in this when podcast. Is it coming out? Not telling. I don't know. Do you know when it's coming out? I don't know when it's coming no, out. I don't know when it's coming out. I mean, you know, but, but it could be soon, could be never. I don't really know. But the point is, we've been just doing so much very, shit. Very, very busy. That's all... I've done this week. I At think the honest... start of the week, Lewis, I've Lewis got me to help him, and it's I think a very good thing that I came on board to help finish producing the final aspects because otherwise, Lewis, I do not think you would have had a comedy special coming out. I think honestly, I think actually getting the special released and out has been the hardest process. Oh really? Oh yeah, editing. Editing was di- di- wasn't hard. It was just tedious because I had to watch it a million times and pick where I did the best jokes. But it was just wherever. one guy to talk to. But yeah, I just had to talk to Antonio, and then the I would director. sit there and I I knew my jokes, so I know I know comedy back to front. But this facilitating the distribution has been fucked because I can't handle talking to more than two people a day. And <laughs> not only that, but you decided to have it released online, released. In 1080p and 4K, released yeah. in cinemas. You're doing a cinema tour. There's a whole format and five. Oh yeah, just before you go so on and start complaining, uh, the advanced screenings for the comedy special are on sale now in cinemas. I'm coming to Melbourne, Brisbane, and Sydney only. They are very small, hundred seat cinemas. They're full, actual, real movie cinemas. Real movie cinemas. We're uh, keeping it small, so it's exclusive yeah. and exciting. So and those are they're on, on the, sale the, now. So if you now. want one, you better get one because they will sell out very yeah. soon. And I haven't posted anywhere about it, so you guys are the first people to know, apart from Patreon and Indiegogo so people. The, and it's it's you're going to a full cinema, so red carpet premiere. So yeah. in, in Melbourne, it's Palais Cinema at yep. Westgarth, which is in Northgate. Do you know all this shit? I don't. I've been organising it, Lewis. <laughs> what do you think I've been doing this week? <laughs> okay. Well, in, you plug in it Sydney, then. In Sydney, it is Palais Cinema, Palais Cinema Norton, 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 Norton Street. Norton Street. And, Where's that, Lewis? What in, suburb is that in? I, and in Brisbane, it's, <laughs> it's in Like It. It's in Like It. Like It. Like Art. Like, like Art. Say you pref- doesn't matter. In Brisbane, where is it, Lewis? Where are you? In Brisbane, where that's is the easy. Cinema screen? In Brisbane, it's it's in a cinema. <laughs> Tell them. And for anyone who actually wants to come, it is at uh, sh- I don't know how to say it. This is embarrassing. What? Schnell. Sconell. 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 Do you know that? Cinema. Yeah. I, d- oh, I don't know. Cinema. I sounded it it's out. At, it's at the University of Queensland. They the University of cinema. Queensland. They've got a cinema there and uh, we're hosting the, the... I'm hosting the premiere. And I'm going to be at every every single one. So it's not just like you're going to watch a movie. I'm going to be there and it's uh, it'll be before the comedy special comes out online. <clears> so it's an advanced screening. Do you know so what dates they are, Lewis? The 17th is... Is... One of them. The world the, premiere in... In Melbourne. Yes. The 18th is the second world premiere no, that's not in correct. Sydney. Yes, it is and in And then Sydney. the 19th is the third world premiere. The third... In, is this... <laughs> in Brisbane. Not in Africa? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, that was such a good joke that I didn't get it. It took me a couple of seconds. I thought you knew... Yeah, the third world premiere... Sometimes he makes jokes that he doesn't realise. Did you realise you said third world premiere? Yeah, but I was like, it was the third one because whatever, guys. <laughs> I'm not. I'm coming to Brisbane, which is kind of like the third world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and tickets are available at loosebeers.com slash gigs. It's not just an. It's not like you're going and seeing a movie. What will actually happen on the night of? Because people haven't been to these before. Is what will happen is I'm going to be there. So at the start of the night, you come in, you sit in your seats in the cinema. 
I do a little performance and I tell you what, what you're going to see and all this kind of stuff. Then we all watch it, uh, the whole comedy special on the movie cinema screen. And then afterwards, I'm going to be hosting a Q&A where you can ask me questions about how I wrote the jokes, how we made the special, all that kind of stuff. Uh, anything that you want to ask me about the <clears throat> comedy special, I'll be there to answer it for you in person. Uh, and then I'll take photos with everyone and you can get like some Death Threats Don't Scare Me merchandise. I'll have uh, t-shirts. I might have hoodies. They're on the way. They're telling me they'll be here at the... Well, in the next couple of days. So I might have them, but I'll definitely have t-shirts and posters. posters. <laughs> the poster is amazing. It was an amazing collaboration with Matthew. Oh, yeah, you guys one. haven't seen it. It's by far the best poster. Anyway, I don't want this to sound like a massive plug for the But It's just you exciting come, come. because yeah. it's all coming together and we've been working on it for a very long time. Lewis yeah. has been working on it for really the past three and a half years yeah. getting the material making it perfect it's a feature length so it's 56 minutes it's an hour long yeah. so when you're coming to the cinema to see it you're really you're going to see a movie where Lewis is the star which should never have happened <laughs> <laughs> oh dude you know what I'm really excited about I want to I mean I've seen the special a million times so I know that it's, that it's good or whatever I've seen it but I want to watch other people watch it well, you're just going to make never... people nervous saying that. I'm going to watch you cunts. I'm bringing night vision goggles and I'm going to sit underneath the screen just looking at you. And if anyone's not laughing, I'll pause it and go, Get him out of here! <laughs> 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 no, I'll probably, I'll, I'll probably just sit at the back and eat popcorn. Throw popcorn on. No. A trick. Fuck off. Alright, so that's the thing. Loosebeers.com slash gigs if you want to come to that. There's like a hundred tickets in each city, so So that's something that I've been organising is getting the format, which is crazy difficult. I've had to speak to so many people about that. It should have been done about a month ago. Lewis kept on telling me he had it organised. Lewis, did you have it organised? Here's the thing. I, with, all, with radio and stand-up and videos and this comedy special release, I honestly... I'm incapable of remembering everything that was going on. So at any one time, I think I was remembering five things that I had to do. So and I'd be like, oh, I only have to do five things. I could do this. But unfortunately, there was 500 things. Yeah, I was going to say 500. There's only space accurate. for five in my head. Because Lewis has a brain of a goldfish. <laughs> no, I'm just not a fucking production company. A dis- I'm not a distribution company, and neither of you. So everyone, hashtag... Thanks, Jazz, on Twitter. Because I don't without have Twitter, it doesn't matter. Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. You can hashtag it on Instagram. I have Instagram. I okay. will check out hashtag, hashtag on Instagram. Thanks, Jazz. Jazz is spelled with a Z, not an S. Just shut up. All right. No, no one cares about the hashtag. Come on, it's very different. Jazz with an S is like Jazz, and okay. what do you mean no one cares about the hashtag? No one gives a fuck about a hashtag. Are all my hard work and you're giving me a throwaway yes. hashtag. Yes, this so is... So, all, this... all I mean to you is a hashtag that doesn't even exist. Hey, I gave you 150 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll pay you for this week as well. I'm poor, alright? That's the other thing. We didn't realise how fucking expensive putting it out would be. Well, some people didn't realise. Me. I'm an idiot, everyone. But the comedy special is coming out. I think that... <laughs> that there's nothing that can go wrong that will delay it now. Don't. That's why the last would you thing. say That's that? That's the last thing I'll ever say. Why get, would you say that? Yeah, I'm going to get arrested you know by, how by hard the cops for raping you. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come in the door in 20 minutes. I'm like, yeah, no, I, I have to release a comedy my special. IPhone, my location pin. So All right, so... Yeah, that's what we've that's been what, doing. And the last thing we've been doing is getting... Because you also have it coming out on DVD. Because you don't do things by half, so... You have yeah, it coming so out on DVD. DVDs are all confirmed. We're going to get it in stores, which is really cool. Um, and also on my website as well. Uh, but yeah, you guys will see over the next few days. I don't know when. I've got no idea when. But yeah. you guys will see hopefully no soon. Maybe never. we got no mm. idea when it's coming out. But just keep an eye on my page because you might see something potentially. Wink. Yes, we. Um, so that yeah, that's what we've what we've been doing this week. And you know um, what, Lewis? Yeah. I don't think we figured out what episode this is. I think it's episode one hundred and twenty, isn't it? No, I think you've already done episode one hundred and twenty. I think we should guess five bucks. I think it's one hundred and twenty. That's my guess. I think it's one hundred and twenty-six. One hundred and twenty-six. I haven't done that many. That's like halfway halfway to one hundred and fifty. 
It doesn't matter. No one yes, cares it does. about it. I want to see who's right. We'll look it up after this, okay? This is the most boring thing on the planet. No don't one wants you normally to watch... look it up? No, I don't. How do you run a business? How are you a successful comedian, Lewis? Because I'm very fucking good at dick jokes and good at nothing else, okay? <laughs> okay. That's how. Um, <laughs> you just astound me and everyone who knows you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But um, oh, also what's been happening in my life is uh, we just finished our first week, Luke and I, on radio. Uh, like on our, Fox first, FM. our first full run on, on Fox FM during the late night slot. So we've been on radio live from 10 p.m. to midnight, uh, four days a week. And uh, it's ruined my life. <laughs> it's, it has ruined my life. But we're, and, and Luke as well. But we're very happy with what we've, uh, we've achieved on radio. I think the show has gotten a lot better. I think, I don't know, I don't think that me and Luke... Me and Luke need to do a daily show because we have so many ideas that we love returning to and making them longer and bigger and more ridiculous that you just can't do once a week because if you have a one, a weekly show, you have to like reset all of the ideas mm. every time. But if you're on every night, you can be like, yesterday this happened, today we're doing this, tomorrow we're doing that. Well, I think that your show was really good this week. I listened to it several times. Yeah. I thought you and Luke were really good. I enjoyed I hearing so. you on Fox FM. Yeah, that's pretty cool. With some actual listeners. I know, yeah. Uh, although, you know what's funny? The difference between... Because previously, we, we've been on Sunday night, 6 to 8 p.m. So, people calling us, it's a Sunday night. It's only like 7 o'clock or so. Mm. No one's off their face because it's Sunday <laughs> night. But when we're on like a weeknight from 10 p.m. to midnight, you're only talking to either cab drivers who you just can't understand <laughs> or uh, people who are fucked on drugs that are just as hard to understand or, or like night shift workers mm. who, would, who would just rather be in bed so it's it's very funny like like you answer you go look at Lewis welcome to the show and then this guy just goes yeah boys what well, I reckon is like we had <laughs> we did one phone call segment that actually got a bit dangerous where I think the, the segment was uh, what what can't you stop doing? What do you need to quit? And this guy called up and he goes, Hey, boys, I can't stop looking at the beautiful women. Oh, is that what he said? I could not understand his accent. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. He was like, I, I can't stop looking at beautiful women. And then we were like, Oh, okay. And he goes, Oh, every time I see one, I have Didn't to slow think? down. And oh. it was just like, yeah, I love objectifying women and I'm a bit of a stalker. And me and Luke had to kind of be like, All right, thanks for calling. Probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> you know what? I yeah. am a little bit disappointed. Can I tell you this? What? Your new show is not nearly modern or digital enough. No, it's not. It's not. But, I don't know. I think that... I had to return my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get my puffer because I need it. So Jazz is here entertaining you all. I'll yell stuff while I'm looking for it. I don't know where it is. He thick. Huh? I said you're thick. Yeah, how does it feel, Lewis? Thing? How does I it suck. feel to be objectified? I'm not an object. I'm a comedian. I show some respect. Yes, I might have a thick AF booty, but that doesn't mean that you can just post about it, alright? I'm not an object. Make sure, hashtag ask consent. <laughs> Stop telling people to do hashtag. Make sure you ask consent, Lewis's consent, before you say he's thick next time. Alright, I'm back. And I'm not, and I am thick, but I don't want to see any of that shit being posted, alright? <laughs> alright. So, man, I, I just have not, that's why I've got Jazz on here today, because I have nothing to talk about. All I've been doing is like emailing and calling and doing all this kind of shit, organizing the marketing and trying to get everything ready, building the website. I've finally figured out. How to make a website that will actually let me do five dollar downloads, and mm. we worked out that the file size for the 4K edition we thought was going to be like 16 gigs, which would have been crazy. But we got it down to six gigs. Like that's all. That's all we've been doing this week is talking to the director, trying to get the perfect file size, and all that kind of stuff. It's incredibly boring for you guys, and you won't even notice that no, we've done it. But you won't know. But you will just know there has been so much work. Yeah. And I've made Lewis swear an oath that he cannot pick up any 
new massive projects in which neither of us have any experience <laughs> and and just decide he's going to do it by himself because what that means is at some point I'm going to have to step in <laughs> and, and I can do the that project. Jazz help me I'm drowning <laughs> that's what this whole fucking uh, thing has been this, the, you know what that's the hardest thing for me this week when I started to finally got some time and started yeah. to help you the hardest thing was your fucking commentary that you <laughs> recorded with Luke and with Mike yeah, so uh, the commentary oh. was one of the stretch goals for the comedy special. Which so the commentary will be on the DVD and on the uh, the digital deluxe edition, where you pay twelve bucks instead of five, you get commentary and four K. Um, and the commentary, I didn't know who I wanted to do the commentary with. It was actually a hard choice. I was like, oh, I know that I want Luke in it, but he's seen my material so many times mm. that the special won't be new to him at all mm -hmm. and he was there when we wrote the jokes so that's an interesting perspective and he was and there then, when you filmed it and he, yeah. knows, he knows the whole story yeah so that's good to have yeah. him and then you have me so obviously I'm the guy who made the thing and then I wanted the third person I was like look I can't just have another I was thinking about Khaled but I was like you know Khaled's kind of the same as Luke he's seen my stuff and he's seen oh, it back yeah, to front definitely. and he's a stand up comedian so I was like oh then it'll be too many people competing as well not, yeah. not so funny yeah exactly like, you don't need funny. three comedians so I was like I need like who's the perfect person that not only doesn't know all of my stand up stuff back to front <laughs> uh, wasn't there when like I was writing the material and, and is kind of newer to me and also someone who is going to tell me off for, for all of the fucked up jokes that are in the comedy special. <laughs> that rules me out because yeah. I don't no. fit any of those criteria. Because you're, you're, you would be like, yeah, go harder. So I <laughs> oh, was I like... I think you can be a bit more fucked on that one, Lewis. <laughs> I was like, who's the person who keeps telling me that I shouldn't joke about things? And I was like, ah, it's Radio Mike from the Luke and Lewis show. So the commentary is done by me, Luke Hidgel and Radio Mike and it's, it's actually very, very funny. I'd recommend you guys getting it. Um... But well, I haven't listened to it, so I hope it is funny for the amount of stress it's caused me. Apparently, you, Luke, and Mike thought it would be a great idea to talk for five minutes longer than the the special actually runs for. Yeah. So what happened was we sat down to record the comedy special, and I knew that commentary goes for exactly Rule how long. Rule number one of commentary: the movie is. it goes for as long as the movie goes. I know it that does not go longer. It but does not it was, go shorter. It was fucking... It goes for as long as the movie goes. <laughs> it was fucking Luke's fault. Listen to me. This is what happened. I sit down <laughs> and we turn all... We're in the radio studio, so we turn the mics on, we get everything going, and then I'm like, all right, you, is everyone ready? And everyone goes, yes. I'm like, okay, let's go. And I hit play on the thing. And then I go, all right, guys, so this is the commentary. Welcome. I'm Lewis. I'm that here with Luke. That bad. And what I'm happened? here with Radio Mike. And then while this is going on, the intro is playing. Okay. Don't don't reveal the intro because they haven't seen it. So the intro to the comedy special is playing, and uh, Luke when is goes. It coming out again? I don't know when it's coming out. At okay. some point, we should so probably figure that out. Probably should figure that yeah, out. Okay. We'll let you guys know when we know. Yeah. So the intro to the comedy special is playing. This is before I get on stage. We film like an intro thing, and what that, while that's happening, I'm saying. Who wrote? Tell them who wrote the Shut intro. Shut up. You'll find. Let me tell, tell my story. Jazz wrote it, and I helped. Okay. <laughs> so what happened is, as I'm introducing everyone, the intro almost finishes. And Luke goes, wait, 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 can we start again? I'm like, we can't start again. I'm like, no. He goes, no, I want to start again because I want to make fun of you for whatever the fuck that was. Okay. And then I was like, fine, we'll go back. And then we play it again. I do the intro. And he's like, no, 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 I need time to make fun of you for this for scene. For what's happening on the screen. For what's happening okay. on the screen, on the, the intro. intro. I'm like, we Did can't. Did he make fun of my intro sequence? Shush. And then he goes, and then I'm like, fine, we can do it. And then he's like, oh, why don't we just record beforehand? I'm like, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. And Mike mm. said, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. And Todd said, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. <laughs> and Luke said, nah, nah, let's just do it. And you can edit it out later if you want to. And I was like, great. All right, let's just do that. So I hit record, did the intro, and then Luke got to make fun of me. And you know what? Wasn't even that funny. <laughs> oh, and, then, and then the comedy special ended. Uh, and something happened in the, in the commentary. You ended up talking a little bit longer afterwards. Yeah, we ended up talking longer. So... And look... The comedy special... There was about five minutes of Shrek jokes right at the end. <laughs> and that's... 
that's the reason why the commentary is longer. Because one, because Luke wanted to make fun of me, even though it wasn't that funny. And then at the end of it, there was about five minutes of hilarious Shrek jokes. Because, I just of course, there was. can't believe that, and that's, to be honest. Because I did not know what I was battling for this whole week. I knew that I had to get the commentary on, and I knew that it wasn't the right length. But so what happened when you tried to get the commentary on the DVD? Just so people understand well, yeah, why this was I will, a pitch. I will explain. But it, so your special runs for about 56 minutes. Yeah. And your commentary runs for 61 minutes. Yes. So how we first started to realize that this was not quite right, we sent it through to the director to sync the audio and yeah. the visual. And he comes back and he says, Hey man, usually it goes for the same length of time. So... I have two options for you. You can go for option one, or you can go for option two. Pretty much, he gave us two solutions. And I sent Luke a text. I told you, fuckhead. <laughs> um, so we chose one of the options. He synced the audio and the visual to make it work, and then we sent it through to the DVD distributor. And then the DVD distributor goes, um, "The commentary and the movie is meant to go for the same amount of time." And then I text Luke, going, "You fucking ruined my life, cunt." <laughs> Yeah, your life. You're not the one. How many times have you spoken to the DVD distributor this week? This is after this you week? text me. Oh, okay. So I'm just, pu- I'm just forwarding on oh, your so frustration Oh, so you're forwarding my Luke. hate to yeah, Luke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you just put yeah. a little extra? Yeah, hashtag fuck Luke. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag thank jazz fuck Luke. Yeah. Oh, that sounds wrong. Nah. No, nah, just Maybe not. separate Maybe hashtags. We had separate hashtags. <laughs> um, so then the DVD distributor goes... These are meant to go for the same length of time. What's going on? You're like, don't worry. We've already sorted out with the director. You should have everything you need. They go, okay. And then the DVD distributor has a DVD menu authoring guy. The guy who does all the tech stuff. So they send it through to him. Yeah. So that builds, then, that builds the menu. So when you play the DVD, it's so like, do you want to watch this? Or do you want to see the special features? It's or do just you the guy see the who commentary? puts everything on the disc. Yeah, he builds a menu. So... so So far, it's been through about five people. And then that guy who builds the DVD, he goes, Guys, the commentary (laughs) and the main feature is meant to go for the same amount of time. And I said, guys, guys, I know everyone's angry, but you need to calm down. Because there's five minutes of banger Shrek jokes that I you need in the DVD. You were just the Vida Loca over on Fox FM. You were not dealing with any Living the Vida Loca was in Shrek. Yes, I know. That's why I said it. Oh, good. I'm, I'm good funny. Shrek joke, baby. We should put that in the commentary. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so honestly, it went through about six people the whole time. It was just phone calls, emails, people saying, it's not going to work because of this. And then I was saying, well, here's the solution that we started with. Is there something wrong with that solution? It's just back and forth. I spoke to about six different people. It took four days to sort out because every time we reached a solution, one day for somebody every else jokes. got confused. And we had to change a few things with the tech that then the director had to upload to the DVD people and new. Yep. But the whole thing is about 70 gigabytes for the DVD format, which yeah. meant that every time we changed something, the director had to restart the upload and it would take overnight. And it took me four days to sort out. And then today I find out that it is Shrek jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I probably could have edited them out. I didn't know what I was <laughs> fighting for. You're fighting for a bunch of fucking ripper Shrek jokes. And in the commentary, in, of the, my in the middle special. of juggling getting the right format also for the cinema, which thankfully there is no audio commentary for. Yeah. And getting the right format for the for the online downloads and talking to the venues, and I'm also helping manage your next tour at the moment. And yeah. I've been talking to merchandise people. And Lewis, will you get yourself an assistant? Yes. Well, hopefully you guys will will spend seven extra dollars to get the Shrek joke, joke commentary. <laughs> So that I can afford an assistant, and then it'll be her problem. To be fair, it does sound pretty funny. Yeah, it was it was pretty good, but it you guys will, like you guys will see. I like don't know if usually, it's worth all the effort. Usually, I would be all for sh- five minutes of Shrek material. Yeah. In fact, I listened to the Shrek Hour yeah. on what Triple I, M Modern Digital. I can't remember that was on Modern Digital. Yeah, that was on Modern Digital. Yeah. I listened to that hour, and I thoroughly thought that it was not worth it, and the best thing I'd ever heard all yeah. at once. Yeah, so that's my commentary, guys. If you want to watch that, it ruined Jasmine's life. But there's some fucking Shrek jokes in there if you want to listen yeah. to that. 
Um, so yeah, we're we're finally getting there though. It's so close now. Yeah. I think that it might be co- actually. When is it coming out? I don't know. I can't remember. I'm not sure. But the trailer. Get your memory check. The trailer is done. We've seen the trailer, and that's been that's amazing. Did that come out today? No, it's not. No. Oh, you mean we've seen the trailer? Yeah, we've seen the trailer. Yes, we've seen the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we've seen the trailer. But we don't know when it comes. Sorry, out. I'm just confused. Yeah. Um. um so yes, that's what's the been trailer happening. is amazing. When's the trailer coming out? Not sure. You don't know. Don't know. Okay. Well, you still quick? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, how long have we been eye, going for? Keep an eye on the pages, though. But yes, everything is awesome. So... I guess uh, that's kind of everything we wanted to cover with the comedy special, isn't it? Everything that Lewis has been doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're at 25 minutes, and now we're, we're up to the part where... Why is Jasmine on this podcast? Jasmine. Aside from the fact that I saved a Shrek commentary this week. Yes. I gave it CPR, Lewis. You brought it back to life. I brought it back to life. It was so close to death. And if only I knew Shrek was in it, I probably would have let it perish. Yeah. I could have edited it out. That would have saved you about Uh, four days and me a lot of fucking money. Um, Yeah, it's probably going to build all the tension. They're going to listen to it expecting greatness. No, no, it's garbage. It's fucking shit, but it's very funny. Uh, Um, But anyway, Jazz, what have you been up to outside of of saving my comedy special? You mean before before all this? Yeah. Before, well... <clears throat> I've been launching a, my own business properly. I think I've sort of been a bit of deja vu. I've done this on the podcast before, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, I think you have. This is your second business on yes, the podcast? Yes, this is my second business, which is now my main business. So my last business was uh, I was getting into concert management. Yeah. Uh, Lewis is a bit of a gateway drug to that, yes. <laughs> to that world, um, to get a lot of clients and connections. But I just realized that, honestly, Lewis, I do not enjoy that much organizing. No, it's a lot of admin organizing a tour. (laughs) It's a lot of admin and a lot of phone calls. And the thing is that you then, that's your job. You can't outsource that. It's your skill. And I just realized I just didn't want to do that for the rest of my life, which is why we're working with someone new to do your your tour, which yeah. is going to be this year as well. So a lot of things in the pipeline for you. Yeah, that's all getting locked in too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've moved away when from... When is that? September. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, we do know that. Yeah. Was I meant to not know yeah, that? Yeah, I was just testing you. Yeah, oh. no, they all know that. September, October, September. November. Yeah, major shows yeah. in October. Yeah. Um, Melbourne is the only one that will be in November. Yep. Yeah. So. I think this podcast has enough plugging. So continue to plug your new business. Yeah, I'm the best plug my new <laughs> business. So finish my <coughs> old business, get rid of that, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> this is something that I've been working on now for nine months. This business idea is the most first world unnecessary shit on the planet. Yeah. But fuck, it's good. <laughs> it's fine. a good idea. Everyone, everyone I've shown this to is like, that's the most unnecessary shit ever. I want it. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All. You're welcome. <laughs> so, um, I've launched a business with Flower Wall Hire. So, if you don't know what that is, which I'm assuming the majority of your audience won't. No. Seeing as they're generally young men. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, there's a couple girls out there. Whole bunch of lesbians in denim vests. I shouted for the girls. Yeah, good. That was out of respect. <laughs> <laughs> respect for listening to Lewis's podcast. Good, because that one will end me in fucking. You prison. know what? I heard your denim vest bit, and I own a denim vest. Ah, oh, fuck. I've been dating a lesbian the whole time. <laughs> Tell them about your business. So Jasmine started a business called Wonder Wall Florals. Wonder Wall Florals. Look it up Instagram, Facebook. <coughs> um, it's flower wall high. So these gorgeous full walls. They're two meters by two meters. So they're huge. They're like a Lewis by Lewis. I was about to say that. Oh, uh, well, I wrote Thanks for taking my bit. Well, hang on, I wrote that fucking it joke. It is your bit. Actually, many did years you ago. write that? Or did yes, you? I wrote that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sometimes I wonder if you wrote that or I wrote. You hardly write any of my bits, all right? <laughs> It's still it's great to troll you by saying that though. Well, I invented flower wall florals um, a couple me. of years ago. It Excuse came to me, me when I realized that there was just such a need for flower walls at parties. See, there were all these businesses that were catering to weddings that were hiring out flower walls that were really expensive and they were going really well, but everyone was forgetting about all of the younger people that want flower walls at their party and that's why I invented you're flower just, you're wall really, wonder whatever the fuck you're it's really called. niching this marketing pitch in a way that I don't think I approved 
Well, tell you tell them then. What is what is it? Well, yeah. So they they're pretty much backdrops for parties, weddings, engagements, events. Some rich people have it. Do you know rich people have huge first birthday parties for their children? Yeah, I don't like understand that. Like their baby turns one, and they hire a church hall. And do a full catering for their their baby, which will never I, remember it. I think that's crazy because it's like, dude, the kid is still in like the age range for SIDS. Like he could just die <laughs> for no, for no reason. <laughs> like, don't celebrate. I celebrate birthdays, but don't spend money on a birthday until it's at least five. And because also, one, it might it'll remember it, and two, it you know it's not going to die and be a fucking waste of money because that money that you spend on the birthday could be reserved for a funeral. I just think, <laughs> I just think that's a that's a silly use of money. It Save does. your birthday money. But if you are, you might do you be know anyone it soon. who's throwing a one year old birthday? <laughs> no. <laughs> or any other event? Um. Yeah. Honestly, do you do one year old funerals as well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have any black? You've got to hit those walls? both markets. Yeah, you know? that's the true. One year old who lived and I've the one just, year old who died. Babe, you came on my podcast, and in, in a minute, I've ruined your your, your, your rep. I've destroyed Wonderwall's reputation. I did this to Mike. If I honestly, I'm just thinking you're you're presenting more business opportunities for me. If anything, <laughs> I do not see this as a bad That's thing. That's true. Okay, guys. So you know. If so you, if you have a one-year-old who has recently <laughs> died, look up Wonderwall Florals on Instagram or Facebook. My website is wonderwall-florals.com.au. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. You can uh, book, or you can check availability, and you can book immediately online, which is something which crazy no one in the party hire industry does. Well, I don't want to talk to anyone on the phone. Whenever no. I go on a fucking website and I see call us for more info, like even with venues, when I'm looking to book yeah. a venue, if they don't have like this is how many seats it has and this is how much it all costs, all of the specs, I am not getting I look on somewhere the phone else. So to ask someone. I think that's the smartest thing that you've done, which is like you don't. Have, <laughs> if you life? want a fucking flower wall, <laughs> you just go on the website and you book it like it's an Uber, and then it just yeah, shows up. Yeah, pretty much. You, it's all it's all built in to choose your date, put in all your event details. And then it's there, uh, I would give you a call to check, um, just make sure we've got it all right. But pretty much it's done. You don't have to worry about it. Which, uh, like, have you ever organized a party? No. No, I don't have enough friends to invite. <laughs> well, I helped organize your 21st. If anyone has organized a party, they know how much hassle it is. And I think so that was the last birthday people. party I had was my 21st. That is literally why event planners exist, is because it yeah. is so confusing to put on these things. So, yeah, it's got amazing functionality. I did all the photos myself, and they look pretty good. Do they look good, Lewis? Yeah, they look good. They're all done in the warehouse, actually. That's why my that's why my warehouse looks like shit at the oh, moment. When are you going to put these carpet... about that? Yes! <laughs> about complain, it when did you complain about weeks. that? When are you going to put these carpet tiles back? When are you going to get rid of those boxes? There's a <laughs> hole in the fucking roof still. That's, that's not, not my fault! I know, but I'm angry about it. So... Pretty much, Lewis got settled in his warehouse. He got a new warehouse. He got everything moved in. He got everything settled. set up, and then we went on a holiday. And I was like, "I'm going to come back." And no, I'm like, this oh, is no. before. Oh yeah, oh, we got everything set up. I'm like, "This is perfect." And then I kicked I can Lewis film, out, and then you kicked me out. I kicked him out so I could do the photo shoot for Wonderwall Florals. So it happened right here <coughs> in this warehouse. I got it all set up um, for what I was doing. I moved all of your lights, all of your cameras. That I took changed, me hours to set up. I changed bi monthly bull into a makeup and hair station. That shit me so much because I have to film a bi monthly bull tomorrow and I'm gonna have to set up all the fucking lights and test the green screen and do the camera angle. I'll be like, oh, why is there makeup here? And, and Lewis, sorry, who saved your Shrek commentary this week? Yeah, well, eat, we're even. Me, that was me. Okay. So you don't. Well, get I saved to. your business. You <laughs> saved my horrendous Shrek jokes. Okay. One, I don't know if one of them is more important than the other. I'm still <laughs> undecided, but we're even. Okay. Now, with that said, should we get into the miscellaneous bit at the end? Um. Yes, I guess so. Cool. If you want to see Jasmine's uh, stuff, it's all over Instagram. It's like Wonderwall Florals. And There's it's cool really, photos. it's really good. Give it a follow. Um, keep it in mind if you know anyone having a party. And yeah, they are very pretty. I would show you, but I can't. It's a podcast. <laughs> um, all right. So if you want to, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. Wait a minute. What? Did you say miscellaneous bit at the end? Yeah, unfortunately, you have to do that if you want to plug your fucking Can walls on here. Can we just keep here. talking about Shrek? Nah. <laughs> I think we've I think we've done enough of that. 
Um, so if you want to send an email into the podcast, if you have a question you'd like me to, to answer, you've got it's any life advice. It's podcast at loosebeers.com. Yes, it is. Podcast and loose beers is sometimes read as loose pairs by people who, who are retarded. Who the fuck? I mean, that's never happened to me before. That's because you are loose beers, so people would know it's loose beers. I talk to people all the time who see it and they go, does that say loose pairs? Oh, my website looks like I sell fucking pairs. <laughs> Did you? Sucks. I thought you knew. I've had you know like five people all say that to me. All the f- really? Yes. Lose pairs? Yes. Fuck. Now all the cunts in the podcast group are just going to post photos of me with pairs at a farm stand. Hey, and get on down some to. Some of them came loose. You know, they're the, they're not secure pairs. Get on down to losepairs.com. All the best pairs in Australia. <laughs> Straight to your fucking door. Also, while you're there, spend 12 bucks and you get a commentary with Shrek jokes in it. But, but I mainly sell pears. And we don't know when the commentary... And we don't know when the commentary's coming. <laughs> Fuck. Alright. Uh, this is why we're in a relationship. Yeah, I don't and know. this is why everyone thinks we're always having a fucking domestic we are. relationship. <laughs> we are. It's just fun. Alright. Um, okay, let's get it over, over with. Give us a question. All right, I don't. Have... I actually kind of like miscellaneous bit because I feel like I can help people with their life's problems. Well, but you just use it as an excuse to just say the most fuck thing that you can think of. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and yes, that's the podcast. Apparently, you're quite shameless about that. Oh yeah, I'll say, I love saying horrible things. Like I'll I'll give you my serious opinion in a sentence, <clears throat> but most of my answer is just going to be worry. making fun of you. I and do worry talking about, about how you... lesbians scissor in the fridge and wear denim vests. That's my podcast. <laughs> now, first I do, question. Wait, no, what? I do worry about the advice you give sometimes because some people are quite impressionable and I've heard oh, yeah. a couple of instances of people taking your advice way too seriously it's not my fault or out of if context. someone f- it listens to this and t- it takes what I say in the most fucking autistic way they could think of <laughs> I had one guy you, I don't know if you remember this but a couple podcasts ago I was talking about uh, uh, saying no like, because I was so busy, and all these people were hitting me up, and they wanted to do things, they wanted to work with me, they wanted me to look over their plans, and I had radio, stand-up, videos, this comedy special, and I had a period in my life, which is still going, where I was like, where I just had to had to say no to doing shit for people and with people that I did not know. Unless because it was essential. Unless it was essential, <clears throat> or was actually looked like it was an opportunity for me. Yeah. So I said, I'm saying no to people. That's what I'm doing at the moment. And then I get, like, a couple of days later, this tweet from some dude who was, who, <coughs> who sounds like he organized to do something with friends and then they didn't turn up. And then he was like, oh, I should have just said no. Like, Lewis, I'm going to start saying no and I'm never going to do anything with friends. And it's like, that's not what I meant. I was saying no to save time and be more efficient and saying no to strangers this guy's been like, oh yeah, I'm going to do what Lewis does and isolate myself in my home and be depressed. No! That's not what I meant. Fuck. Oh. But anyway. So, would you like to issue a, a restatement for that one? Yes. If you're retarded, <laughs> don't listen. <laughs> now, first, first oh. question. <laughs> Such a problem for me. You just lost half your listeners. <laughs> <laughs> right. First question. Okay, okay lose pairs. What's Fuck your off. question? First question. This isn't really a question. Is it's it just from a, Sam or Sarah? It's a story. I don't. I'm not going to say their name because that they they haven't told me to keep them anonymous, but I'm going to. I've been asking for <clears> for stories of horrible things that you've done that you regret, uh, and this is a banger. Uh, this one is entitled "Pissing in the Holy Water." Yeah, I would keep them anonymous. Yeah. Dude, what were you thinking? Not asking to be kept anonymous. Let me just read it. What what did they do? Hey, Lewis, you lanky fucking long boy. Uh, I haven't got an issue or a problem for you to sort out. I just have a funny story. (laughs) Great. This is good. There's no way people can misconstrue this and isolate themselves from their friends. Or piss in water. (laughs) Uh, a few years ago, my family used to live in the in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Anyway, there did happen to be a small church down the road from our house. One from our house. 
Uh, surprisingly, someone who would piss in the holy water has horrible grammar. Um, <laughs> one weekend, me and my brother were curious and we decided to break into the church even though they leave the doors open so people can pray and, and whatever. We went inside and we found the place empty and because we were both belligerent cunts, at least he knows, we decided to drink some of what I assume is the holy water in the bird bath thing by the altar. <laughs> the bird bath thing. Is it? I don't know. Is it a bird bath? It kind of looks like that. After that, we fucked around for a bit when my brother, who was 10 at the time, dropped his pants and pissed into it with the holy water in there. Anyway, I hope you get a laugh out of my brother and myself's idiocy. By the way, I would add that I would still rather compromise my chance at getting into heaven than listen to miscellaneous rights abuse that you listen to the rights abuse that you call miscellaneous bit at the end. Have an astronomically shit one. Jeez, I'm surprised you can spell astronomically he after getting to the bottom of that end out. Um, so wait, but no, he didn't piss himself. It was just his brother. His brother, who was ten. I mean, that kid's got a lot of balls for ten years old. No, to get... he's just ten. he's just too dumb to understand. That someone's going to put that on a baby's head. (laughs) You just kind of like... You just kind of golden showered by association and infant. Good on you, man. And a hundred other people at the congregation. You know what? I think... Do they... Does that get changed? Does that water get changed? They have to refill it at some point. You'd think so. Surely they'd fill... I mean, don't you think they'd fill it every day? But if they were drinking from it, that meant there were water there. Because we're not from... We've never been to... What denomination is that? Catholic or Anglican? No, Catholic. I don't know. I think Catholic people do. I have no idea. We're probably being very wrong. Oh. That's, well, that's fucked. There's not too much to say about that email other than you're going to hell. I hope you enjoy the ride down. Um, uh, <laughs> what else do we have? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Stalker ex-friend... Had dick sucked by brother. I think this podcast is just going to be a story time podcast, guys. I don't think anyone's going to need story any advice time here. With Chaz and Lewis. Um, hey, Lewis. <laughs> I was listening to the radio show on Fox, and I heard you question about what your friends have told you that surprised you. See, I think I love reading these because sometimes we get stuff on the radio show that you know we have ideas for phoners. That is so fucked up that you just can't do it. Yeah, you just can't do it on radio. Yeah, so so this <laughs> the so you're ma- maintaining a facade of commercialism and everything that this podcast is not. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> I don't know. I don't get paid to do a radio show. I get paid to not say cunt for two hours. Yeah, you're That's paid, my job. You're paid to be good boy, Lewis. So yeah, is it good guy, Lou. Yeah, good guy, Lou. You're I know. I don't know. Lou. I'm still an asshole. I think people have figured out that you're just a nice asshole, though. Yeah, I just I, I'm an asshole that doesn't swear on the radio show. People have. <laughs> People have started to figure out that me and Luke have just started to be rude to callers now. Like, yeah. whenever anyone calls up and is an idiot, we'll just start making fun of them and yeah. they don't realise. It's <clears> Which is great. So, I hope... hope uh, it's a little bit of bad boy Lou sneaking in. Hope that trend continues. <laughs> um, <coughs> hey, Lewis. I was listening to the radio, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> um, uh, I was listening to your question about what your friends have told you that, that surprised you. I have this friend, call him Jacob. Jacob was staying at my house for the night and we started talking instead of sleeping. About 20 minutes into the conversation, he tells me that his older brother sucked his dick, then proceeded to try and tell me that it isn't incest as they don't live together. (laughs) Right? I've tried to separate myself away from Jacob, but one day I was at work, I looked out to the dining area and I saw this cunt sitting there looking at me. I approached him and asked what he was doing and he responded, I'm waiting for you to finish your shift. I had two hours left of work and he waited for two hours just watching me work. I was told by... Yeah, I was told by one of my friends who lives near me that while I was away, he sat on my doorstep for three hours. I've tried to get rid of this cunt, but how do I do it without offending him as I'm one of the only people who won't instantly tell him to fuck off and he seems very depressed and is... Expressed interest in self harm and suicide. Okay. Have a shit day. Have a shitter day than Kevin Spacey auditioning for the Wiggles. I don't get that. He's a pedophile. Ah, that's funny. Wouldn't he have a. Never, never mind. What, did he'd have <laughs> a bad day if he didn't get the part, but if he had a, if he got the part. But can we just not dissect that? He'd I be don't like fucking think, jackpot. I don't think that that. Deserves us trying to understand. 
He'd be like, hey guys, can we change hot potato to hot nine year old? <laughs> All right, let's move on from that. No, that, that email though, <coughs> did he say that his friend told him that? His friend told him that, that his. That his, uh, his brother. His. I don't know. His brother sucked his dick and was like, it's not incest because we're in different homes. Which is not true, man. No, it's not. Like, that's that's sexual abuse. Yeah. It's not. Because it, if it's self-harm and suicide, he might be seriously... It might have seriously affected him. Yeah, I would say, man, that if you... I mean, it sounds fucking weird that this dude's following you around. That's definitely not okay. But I would say that maybe you should, you should suggest to him that he should talk to an actual therapist. Maybe you should suggest to him that it's... He's being misled to think it's not incest. Yeah. Because I don't know the other the brother is older or younger. Older. Older brother. Yeah, so could be taking advantage of him. I don't know. I would say that This is very dark. I'd say that maybe yeah. your friend is not understood the situation properly and it seems that you just got scared about it and then fucked off. It is weird, but Thing, life is weird and you can't fuck off every time someone does something weird, right? Yeah, you yeah. can't. He could, he could just be a fucking lost puppy. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. people are like that where you just need to, at the, you need to, like maybe at no. the same time, uh, establish boundaries and yeah. help them out. <clears throat> yeah. I would say, <clears throat> if, I, if I were you, I would say to him, look, that story freaked me out because that's not normal behavior. Um, between siblings, doesn't matter if you live together or not, and that maybe if it's worrying him, then he should talk to someone about it. It just can't be you, because yeah. that's like you're not qualified. I mean, you got so scared. It sounds like you ran off, which is, I guess, understandable because it's very weird. Yeah. Um. Anyway, shall we move on to a lighter question? Yeah. Maybe. We've had two fucking evil ones in a row. I think this one's uh, better. So far, we pissed on some babies. Yes. And then incest. Yes. <laughs> and Kevin Spacey. Yes. So pretty. This is. <laughs> Let's go for it. Go for the is trifecta. The worst, worst part of the podcast. <laughs> um, all right. So here's an email. Why Wonderwall Florals not affiliated with any of this? <laughs> why manual drivers are arrogant towards autos? I swear, if this email ends with fucking kids, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> um, hey, Lewis. My name is Caleb. Oh, if you don't know Jazz, I've been yelling about how automatics are better than manuals. Yes. Why the fuck would you want to drive a manual? Unless you want to do burnouts. If you want or, to do burnouts and drive like a dickhead, cool, you feel go for cool. it. You feel pretty cool when you drive manual. Really? That's why. It's like, it's the hipster of cars. But the whole time you feel cool? N- yes. When you're stuck in traffic and you got to go up, up and down and up yeah, and down and you feel it real makes, cool? Because nowadays it's like people who choose to listen to vinyls, even though we have fucking MP3s. Yeah. Like you have an iPod. But for some reason, you're collecting vinyls. That's like, it, even when you're in traffic and it's a pain, it's like, who? I'm doing this manual. I'm That's cool. a good idea, Jazz. Can you get on my comedy special coming out on vinyl? No. Why not? Because I don't know what I'd do with the commentary. <laughs> the B <laughs> side would be longer than the A side. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> a giant green <gray laughs> record. Um, <clears throat> hey, Lewis, my name's Caleb, and I'm a manual driver. Ah. Uh, in light of last week's podcast, I have... Fuck you, Caleb. I've come, up with, <laughs> I've come up with the real reason why manual drivers are so cocky and arrogant towards auto drivers. See, that's the thing that I don't get. I get, sure, if you prefer manual, awesome. But why do you look... Why, do you, why are you pretending that you're superior for staying in the past? People who listen to vinyls think they're better when really they're just some fucking go, dickhead spending $40 on Do you know what everyone disc. who listens to vinyl say? I love the pops that it makes. It's like, no, that's distorted audio. Yeah. You love distorted audio. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, although it I'm does sound kind of nice. Now I'm going to get like 50 <laughs> emails from fucking record collectors. No, man, there's nothing like leafing through a record store and looking at the cover art and smelling it when yeah. you open it and fucking... Pretending that the new Kendrick Lamar record sounds better on vinyl, even though it was recorded for streaming. In 2018. <laughs> yeah. Um, I get, you know, I get people buying old vinyls when vinyls was what music was made for. Yeah. But, but 
buying a vinyl that's of like a like, new... That's a vintage collection. Like, you've got a piece of history. I don't know. Maybe I'll put out my special on vinyl. You guys can fucking know. Now you actually want to put it out on vinyl? Hey, I don't know. I was trying to make an analogy about how manual drivers think they're superior because it makes them feel cool. Yeah. And now you want me to find a new distributor. So as all I'm saying is... Listening to my comedy special on vinyl just sounds so much better. You don't even own a record player. No, I don't. Alright, moving on. My name's blah, blah, blah. Cocky towards auto drivers. Most people wouldn't choose to learn in a manual car, so most manual drivers like me can't get their hands on an automatic to learn in due to learning differing circumstances. Because they can't or don't learn in an automatic, they take it out on auto drivers. Ah, so manual drivers are disabled. I get it. No, they're just repressed. Their auto tendencies are repressed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another reason is that manual drivers spend a ton more time learning to drive because of the gears and they have to use the clutch as well as the brake and the accelerator. For me personally, I was way over 10 hours of driving until I finally learnt properly how to handle a manual car. Yeah, actually, that's a good point because I was on the road my first lesson yeah whereas I remember trying to learn in a manual I was in a car park and like three weeks in a row with my dad trying to figure out how to start the fucking thing and go up a hill I would just I just I couldn't do it I couldn't work it out yeah and that's what and but then when I do my first ever driving lesson in an auto he's like all right let's go onto this busy road don't (laughs) hit the cars I'm like all right Stay, stay in your lane um it's just so so much it makes so much more sense like, when automatic cars become affordable and normal, are people got to be like, oh, but I, dro- I drive. Oh, dude, and yeah, the minute that a, dr- I, that a I car mean, like a drives... like self-driving yeah, car. The minute oh, a car drives itself, I'll be, I'll be screaming, fuck thing. automatics. Yeah. You have to steer, you have to Although, brake. Although, I do worry, is it going to get hacked like in iRobot? Yeah, I was talking about this like the where we, podcast. Where are you? Yeah, dude, they're going to hack podcasts. They've, or they've, I mean, cars. sorry, they're going to pack cars. They're going to hack cars. I read a news article. They've already managed to oh, it's hack. It's going to be so easy to assassinate people. They've, yeah, well, they've managed to hack segways. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's not that's not self driving. That's well, just something with a computer different. in it if and wheels. If you can hack a website, then you can hack anything else yeah. electronic, right? Anything yeah. with programming can be hacked. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, they put. You know, it'd be great. What? I just. It doesn't matter. It's a tangent. It's okay. just not. Let's, Let's get through that. this fucking email so we can wrap up. Yeah. Otherwise, we've got really long. Um, uh, it takes longer to, to learn in a manual, and they get a, a sense of achievement and superiority over the auto driver because they know that they put much more effort and time into <clears> learning <throat> to drive. Yeah, that's like me being like, Ugh, I did this the hard way. Look at you with your efficiency, you fucking loser. I do that all the time with everything, and it's not yeah. it's nothing to be proud of. You just did it the hard way. No, it is. Like, psychologically speaking, something that gives you a sense of self-mastery adds to your self-image and your self-esteem. So, all right, so basically... Peterson. He's not. <laughs> not Jordan Peterson. Call me Sigmund Freud or someone else. Not that guy. Oh, why? Because you want to fuck your parents. Wasn't that his thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. To finish up... I can vouch for those people who say drive. What does that mean for you? I don't know. Let me just fit, read if this. If I have an electric car, it doesn't matter. Let me read this email. I could vouch for these people who say driving manuals is fun. You're still <laughs> laughing. I just like triggering you. Um, to finish up, I can vouch for these people who say driving manual is fun because it is. You're still laughing. It's like everything that takes time to learn. I'm going to read it. Like learning... An instrument or a backflip that often, before you learn to do it, you trick yourself into thinking that it will not be that fun or enjoyable to do, but when you actually put in the time and effort to learn the new skill, it becomes something you look forward to doing. Anyway, I hope that was clear enough, and you now know why us manual drivers are the way we are. Cheers, mate. Caleb. Alright, so that whole email was, we did it the hard way, and now we feel proud of ourselves. (laughs) Good on ya. Like we're, you in learn- the, we're in the special class at school and that <laughs> makes us really happy. That's like cool. You forced yourself to learn something that's becoming obsolete and then you yell you at gave, everyone wait, you who's gave moving yourself, on to new technology. You made things harder for you. You gave yourself a handicap and then you overcame it. Yeah. And then you're saying, look at me. <laughs> right. Well, look at me. I don't know. Manual that's the drivers. that's the end Just... of miscellaneous bit at the end. That's the end of the podcast. Uh, thanks for joining me, Jazzy. I still want to rant about manual drivers. Okay, go. Well, 
there's just the thing is if a manual driver sits in the passenger seat of an automatic car while an auto driver is driving they just make comments about they're, they're the worst backseat drivers they just are really they always make comments they're like oh and then <laughs> i don't know just fuck manual drivers man all right i'm glad we're on the same page yes. thanks for listening guys um my comedy special is coming out when, when was that when was that coming out um i don't know yeah well i'm not sure when it's coming out but um just stay tuned to my to all my socials i've got a few videos coming out this week as well uh that you guys will be able to enjoy um but in, but really, I think you should be looking for the comedy special. But I don't know when it's coming in, and I couldn't tell you. Um, but the main thing is, I can tell you, the uh, advanced premiere screenings are on sale. Loosebeers.com slash gigs. I'm going to Melbourne, Brisbane, excited. and Sydney. I'm going to be at every single show doing a and a afterwards and watching it with you guys, hanging out, taking photos. It'll be fucking awesome. And they are very limited capacities. So buy your tickets fucking now, because I'm going to start posting about it on... Uh, on Monday night so really really get on it especially well all of them they're all fucking tiny and they're all yeah. gonna sell out alright Yeah. so thank you very much for listening and check out Wonderwall Florals yeah. on Instagram and Facebook yeah. and uh, check out Jasmine's new business I'm really proud of her and uh, wow. I think it's great and I really think it's gonna work and uh, yeah I think it's, it's a cool idea so check that out and if it's not for you send it to someone that's planning something or you think would like it it'll really help Jazz out yeah it would um, thanks for listening. I will talk to you next Sunday. My comedy special is coming out. I can't remember. But See you have later. a shit one. <laughs> have a shit one.